Everybody, I'm Anthony Ruggiano and I have a few announcements to make. Life has been good since I recovered from cocaine addiction. I'm happy to say it's been coming up on 34 years that I'm clean. Um, I also created an Anthony Ruggiano Jr. Recovery Helpline and I'm going to give you that number right now. If you need help or you need know someone that needs help, please, please call me. The number is 855-963-2113. I'm going to repeat that. It's 855-963-2113. So if someone you know or yourself needs help, please don't hesitate to call me. And in spite of giving back to society, I've been named an ambassador to Face the Music. Face the Music Foundation is a foundation that helps people that can't afford drug treatment and alcohol treatment. Um, they provide scholarships for people to go into treatment. They actually pay for the treatment because not everybody has insurance. So unfortunately, there's some people out there suffering from addiction that can't afford to go to treatment and uh so this foundation supplies the money for treatment which is schooling and uh drug prevention and recovery and treatment is very important because in my own personal story if it wasn't for the treatment center i was lucky enough to go to i would have probably i would probably be dead right now because that treatment center gave me the tools to recover so this foundation affords people those tools to change their life Hi, my name is Anthony Ruggiano. I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters Podcast, and I'm here with actor Leo Rossi. Maybe you could remember him from Analyze This, Halloween 2, and many, many more movies. He's a very, very well-known actor, and I want to welcome him to my podcast. A pleasure, sir. So, Leo, you know, I'm thinking about what I wanted to talk about, and I told you earlier, I'm, I'm always, in, when I meet, like, you know, you come from Philly, I come from New York, Italian-American. I'm sure your grandparents immigrated from Italy. They did. From Sicily, just like my grandparents immigrated from Sicily and Naples. And, you know, and my father was a wise guy, as you know, and I was, he became a wise guy the same year I was born, in 53. He was a well-known Well-known, yes. right. And uh, so I was born into that lifestyle, and he, he was my mentor. Your father was a dynamic guy. You became a successful actor. You know, like, is that the luck of the draw? Like, how, you know... What, what do you, you know, what's your thinking on that? Like, uh, why weren't you, why didn't you gravitate towards? Well, mob? I'll tell you. Um, because you had to be around at Philadelphia's oh, mobbed yeah, up city. Uh, with that. And, and my uncle, you know, if, if you needed any idea, my uncle yeah. was into a lot of different things. We used right. to call him Fingy. Fingy? Yeah, fingers, yeah, yeah. fingers, fingers and everything, and everything right? Yeah, yeah. But um, he was in the uh, linen business. The linen business. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What business, right? You, right? you go into a restaurant, yeah, yeah take our linens, take, yeah, and yeah, all that. Well, they had all that. And up. Um, he was out of Trenton, which, you know, from yeah. Philly's Philly, it's, yeah, it's it's all hooked right up. there. And um, in Trenton, you know, you had Johnny Keys, yeah. you know, you had yeah. Sam DiCavacante yeah, right. and all yeah, that yeah. stuff, yeah. you know. So I, I was around it. Right. But, um, and a lot of guys my age, you know, I knew them, <laughs> but I was an athlete. Okay. So they didn't bother me. And, and I, I didn't yeah. bother them. I showed them respect. Right. And one thing I don't do, I try not to do, is judge. Right. The mannerisms and the talk and yeah, everything. Yeah, what about the flashy cars? And I yeah. mean, that, that didn't appeal to you when you were a kid, none of that stuff? Well, um, it did. Right. You know, and Chaz Palminteri in Bronx Tale aced it. Aced it 100%. I mean, it was it. That, that right. was the 100%. guy in the neighborhood. Yeah. See, in Philly... Most of the guys were old timers, like Angelo Bruno yeah, yeah. And, and all the guys. Um, and it's like, it, it, they, they used to call him the Docile Don. Right. Right. I'm yeah, sure your father yeah, said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on a commission yeah, and everything, yeah. Docile Don. And there wasn't a lot of violence. Mm -hmm. When Atlantic City opened up. That was when the shit at the And family. that was and Philadelphia's domain. They had it locked up. Yeah, I know. But the, the, as the story goes, that uh, Bruno went to his old buddy. 
Carlo yeah. Gambino. Right. And he said this and that. Well, the Genoveses weren't having none of that. No. So Philadelphia became the war zone. Right. For control of Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And man, I mean, I, I would hear and see things and I go, yeah. what happened to him? He opened his door and they found they, his thumb. Blew, yeah, yeah, it's three, three months. Yeah. yeah. But so I was around it. I, in the beginning, I never played mob guys. Yeah, no, no I, know, I, I, I know. played detectives. I, I, yeah, I played everything. This, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you did comedies. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did yeah, comedies. Yeah. You know, uh, Dennis Farina. We yeah, talked yeah, about yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, and you were really good in that. Oh, too, by the way. It? well, yeah. thank yeah. you. But I like it was, that movie. Um, I wrote it too. Yeah. So oh, you did? yeah, good. yeah, and it's stuff. To wow. make fun of it, you got to do it authentically. Like you're a fan of analyze this. Yes, big time. And that was one thing Bob De Niro said. All right, I get it. You're making fun of the characters that I play, yeah. you know, that's all right. Yeah. But we're going to do it with the language, with all that, the blood and violence. Right. We're going to do it that way. And they did. And you didn't audition for that movie, correct? Uh, <laughs> I heard that story. Oh, yeah. You were the only one, I think, right? Yeah, Outside of yeah, De Niro, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, but the thing is that um, Bob De Niro, and I say this with all, he makes other actors look better. Yeah. And he has the wise guy down pat. Oh, I mean, I, anybody that I saw, I mean, he's a, yeah. he has the wise guy down well, pat. Well, and it was a friend of mine. I used to live next to him in, the, in mm -hmm. the city when they were both growing up. And he said, I'm coming home one day, and there's Bob at the door of his apartment. is mm -hmm. open, and he's looking, and he's going all over, and he's yeah. taking it around. And I said, what happened, Bob? He said, somebody broke in. He <laughs> said, yeah. yeah. And he's looking. And he said, well, what are you looking for? So I got to find out how, how they, they did, did it. it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and that yeah. is that's Studious. his curiosity. Yeah, of course. It's just a tribute to him, his longevity. Yes, Al Pacino. Time. I never worked with Al, yeah. but you know they care mm. and they want you to look good. Yeah, right. I was working for my father. We were in the environmental and yeah. ecological refuse yeah. business. We were in the garbage. Your father business. was always legit. Yeah, always was. Right. Uh, now you could do that in, in our area. You went up further north in Jersey. Yeah. And you went in the boroughs. Right. Yeah. So he was your mentor, your father. He was someone yep. you looked up to. Yep. And uh, mm. I went to law school, right? Oh, you did? I knew For that. one year. Oh, okay. I still don't know what a friggin' <laughs> easement is. I don't know what a fucking. <laughs> were, were you going to a criminal lawyer? What were you looking to become? Well, interesting what they do in law school. I'm sitting at, I didn't go to Penn, Ivy League. I went to yeah. Temple, which is a state school, right? right? And there were 300 in the class. And three years later, 100 would graduate. Penn would have 100 in their class, and three years later, 100 would graduate. Yeah, right. So we had a lot of attrition, yeah, yeah. and I was an attritioner. Okay. Right? You see mob hits, you see things. Yeah, of course. So we're sitting 300, and we're winning our criminal law class, and down comes Peter Lyacoris, who ended up being president of Temple, right? Mm -hmm. He comes down on stage, and he says, uh, you know, everybody, we're going to stand. He starts his rap. A guy comes right down the center aisle. He says, yo, flunk me, my father. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And the guy goes like this. And I said, shit, shit, shit. What happened? What, what happened? And then the guy runs out. And like, of course, maybe 20 seconds, he gets up. No, no, don't anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't panic. He said, okay. You, what did the character look like that came in shooting? Everybody yeah, had a different no, character yeah, look. Of course, yeah. It, it yeah, was yeah. just like, it was yeah, right. It was, well, we, can I identify him? No, <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. And he says, that's the business you're in. Yeah. If you want to be a criminal lawyer, right, yeah. that's the that's business, business, you know. Having worked with uh, Ongadi, yeah. uh, Charlie Canisi was. Yeah, I, I went up against Charlie Canisi at Bobby Glass. I testified at Bobby Glass's trial. And oh. out of all the trials I testified at, he gave me the hardest time, Charlie. And at the end, he kept on hopping about telling, how do we know, this is what he kept on saying. He said, how do we know that this man is telling the truth? And he kept on saying it. How do we know this man's telling the truth? Who could say it? Who would? And at the end, after I finished, I got up and I looked at him and I go, that's right. Who could say I was telling the truth? And he, you know, and he just smiled at me. You know, yeah. But he, he was a good on, guy. He was, yeah, yeah. He unfortunately, he passed away. Now he yeah. was a great lawyer. He was the only lawyer that really got not because I, I wasn't making stuff up. But he was the only lawyer that did a good job at tripping me up a few times. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was he was a good attorney. I mean, yeah, yeah. Ju- and he was very tight with Junior. Junior, very because tight. Because I know you wrote that script. Yeah. I know you wrote that script. Travolta played the part. I know. Yeah. I, 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 I love John Travolta, you know, and I knew John personally. I mean, you know, I had a nice very, fellow. I had a great, well, yeah. yeah, John, I had a great relationship with John and, and yeah, he would have liked Travolta playing his part. Yeah. Um, how did that come about? I mean, how did you meet jo- Junior? Well, uh, it was one of those things where somebody introduced me to uh, his brother-in-law, Louis. Yeah. And everything like this and uh, was going to do, but there was a caveat that if you're going to write this script, whoever the writer was, mm-hmm. you had to spend minimum three months in Oyster Bay, yeah, where Junior house. lives yeah. and everything, and with him, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, they'll set you up an apartment, set you up everything nice, yeah. and everything. My God, I thought, this is heaven. Yeah. But the big A-list writers, they yeah. wouldn't do that. They wouldn't do so it. Let no. me spend the day with this guy. I'll get yeah. it. Now yeah. then, I'll do yeah. what then I have I'll to do. do. Yeah. Dramatic yeah. license. Yeah. Once we started, okay, mm. um, I had to turn in twenty pages every week to him. Yeah, and and the producer, but yeah, the of course, producer was a lunatic. <laughs> uh, but um, <laughs> so and you know he would say he read them and he be reading them. And they go, this here is stupid. Mm. Stupid. All right, let me see. I'll address it. You know. yeah. Next week, another 20 pages. You look at This is dumb. I got a stupid and a dumb. <laughs> All right. Okay? Yeah. And, you know, I'm, right? Yeah. And then the third week, he starts, and he started ridiculous come out of his mind. He says, yeah. let me tell you something. Yeah. If you were another writer and you talk to me like You're, that, we go right down in the <laughs> yeah. fucking alley. Yeah. I said, that's where we're going to go and we're yeah. going to do it. And he said, that's the way I talk. Yeah. What do you want? That's the way I talk. Yeah. After that, he never did. Yeah. And he was a pleasure to be with yeah. and to work with. And uh, I'll tell another story about him. And, and, and Did you if, meet his whole family? His oh, mother, yeah. Vicky, the oh, sisters. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the, yeah. the thing. Angel and Kim, and Vicky Kimmy. Yeah. And it was like. Kim, yeah. he says, I know Kim since she's a little girl. All right. I was good friends with her parents. And his, and his father is uh, the, the rug, what do they call him? The rug, uh, the rug maker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Joe. Yeah. The, Joe. Yeah. Joe the rug maker. Yeah, I know Joe since I'm a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking. They used to live right across the street from the park I hung out in 210 okay. Park. Yeah, well, on Ozone, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ozone Park. So, so. Well, he happened? comes from East New York originally. Yes. And I went. You know, you conjure up. Uh, like I'm a dramatist. I'm in the business, right? Yeah. Joe the rug man. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's what he did. He laid he, rugs. Yeah, but I thought he was like. No, he was like, no, he rolled bodies up. Yeah, no. yeah. He was a rug guy. He was Joey, <laughs> Ru- Joey Rugs. He was a yeah, rug guy. And so, yeah. But, so, well, what's your favorite? I said, my favorite. You don't see it on menus anymore. Brajol. Yeah. He goes, oh, you like Brajol? Yeah. Okay. A couple weeks pass. He invites me over Sunday for dinner. He made Brajol. Yeah. Why not? Wow, yeah. that was a great thing. Yeah. I cut in shoe leather. <laughs> and I, I put it in the mouth. Cook. And, you know. How I, was it? You, oh, uh, good, I'm still <laughs> lit, And I can't. I'm still chewing. Yeah. To this yeah. day, I think See, I got a part of Now, his father had cook. good cooks. Other people cook. Because yeah. his father used to have lunch every Saturday in the club. And we used to go there every Saturday and delicious meals. Uh, Bobby Borriello. Who I played? The I know, and the, yeah, yeah, I knew Bobby. And Bobby yeah, was yeah. a legitimate yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, you know, when I say legitimate, well, he was a legitimate in the tough life. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was. A, yeah, big and time. Um, and I he played, was Junior's best man at his wedding. Yes, he was. Yeah. And the reason that I got the part, you know, yeah. and um, did that, you have to audition for that part? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well the one thing that, that uh, Junior said, he said, "You look like him." You do look and a little like the, him. Yeah, you got the sense of humor like him. Yeah, yeah he was everything. a funny guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, um, it was it was really great. I mean, yeah. in that uh, it's too bad, you, too bad you never met John. You never met John in your pit. No, no, you never, never met John. No, no yeah. he was. But I did see, I did see, you know, on the big screen, Junior's uh, meetings with him. Yeah, you know, because well, yeah, well, the if the feds the, tape yeah, it, then yeah. you get yeah, yeah, you get yeah, a copy. Yeah, you yeah, 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 sure. And you could get them. The one thing I remember, because I'm I'm writing the script, and I'm looking mm-hmm. little little things, right? Yeah. And Junior, you know, was and his father his temper. Yeah. Bah, 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 yeah, boom, yeah. boom, 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 and he yeah. left. Yeah. And Junior left, but they had the camera kept rolling, and I saw 
in the room after you step out of there. Yeah. He's waiting for the guards to take, to take him. him back to his cell. Nobody watching. Mm. And he's. Oh yeah, no, he was a gangster. <laughs> yeah, man, <laughs> that he, was him. Boy, yeah. I mean, nobody was watching. No, no. But I, I, saw, yeah. I said, wow. Yeah, no, we had like a little bond, me and him. I don't know, like because we both did time, and and he would lean over to me and he would tell me all uh, talk about people. He told me a really so one day he was on a diet. The father, he was on a diet, so we're sit, it's a Saturday, and we're having everybody's having lunch. So I walked in and everybody's staring at me, and like they didn't know a lot of guys didn't know who I was, and they're all staring at me. And he goes, what are you all staring at? It's Fatty Andy's son, Anthony. Oh, my God. How's your, cause my fa how's your father? Tell him I, because he was away. How, tell him I send my regards. So he says, come on, come sit here. So there was a chair. I sit next to him. And we're reading. And then he leans over to me. He goes, see all these guys, they're all on a diet. Because I'm on a diet. He went, if I went outside right now and picked up little shit balls off the floor and started eating them, they'd all be eating little shit balls off the floor. He told me. Well, he's right. And I, we, I bust out laughing, you know, and because they're, they're wise guys doesn't mean they were in prison. A lot of them never did a day in jail. And he would tell me, you think they ever ate a bologna sandwich? And it was, we used to have so much, you know, so many lifts. It's, it's interesting you say that. Mm. Exactly. Uh, J Junior told me, he said, my father never really trusted anybody that didn't do time. That's why we had a little bond, me and him. Because I, listen, real quick, 1978, I'll never forget, March 28, 1978, I had to turn myself in to do my first bid. That morning, I woke up, I was married to my wife, Alice. I woke up that morning, and I went to father and son barbershop to get a haircut. Now I'm going to, I had to turn myself in that afternoon. <laughs> I'm in the barbershop. Who walks in? John Gotti and Angelo Quack Quack walk into the barber shop. They now they know that afternoon I'm going. Now he wasn't the boss then or nothing. He was just straightened out. Mm -hmm. They know I got to go to jail. He looks at me, goes, "What? What are you doing here? You got to go turn yourself in this afternoon. Go home to your wife. I got you're getting a haircut. What's wrong with you? He <laughs> go home to your wife. So he paid for my haircut and I said goodbye and I went off to prison for two and a half years. And when I got out, I I came to see him again. So we had like we always had a good bond. And I want to turn you on to an energy drink I found called Dino Luzzi. It's made in Italy. It's really good. It gives me a lot of energy. I drink it at my gym, which where it's sold, and it's sold in other stores. So please go out and purchase one. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And I, I got along with Junior too. Junior's an intelligent kid. He is. You he know, went he, to the yeah. New York military yeah, he was, academy. He was in, yeah, I remember yeah. when he used to come around with his with his uniform on. Yeah. You yeah. know, people try to get me to talk bad about the father, but I have nothing bad to say about him because he was always good to yeah. me. Yeah. Look, it, it, we get into judgment. Yeah. You know, and mm -hmm. and you know, sure, you hear tapes, you hear this, you hear that. Okay. Yeah. Um, like I said, I don't judge.